So I finally got the iPad Pro M2 and here's what I really think. Now, first of all, let's get Captain Obvious out of the way. The iPad Pro M2 series is not much different from the last couple of iPad Pros. You know, it's basically the same overall design. So if you're looking for something that's totally groundbreakingly different besides adding Pro to the back of that logo, you're not gonna find much. I mean, the overall iPad is still that 11 inch design with the same overall bezels and everything like that. So nothing has really changed on that front. And so if you're looking for something that, you know, just feels different, it's not here. So let's just get that out of the way first of all. On the whole though, I still really like this design. It's super thin, it's super light, and I think it's a great, you know, portable computer to have around the household, you know, iPad computer, have you? And if you add the magic keyboard and Apple Pencil, it can be quite versatile in what it can do for you. It's also much lighter than the 12.9 M2 iPad. So if you're looking for something that's super powerful and much smaller, this is gonna be the way to go. Now, the next thing I think about this is that, you know, this is a great feel compared to something like the iPad 10th generation. Reason being is, has a laminated display, which is quite nice. It's lighter than that phone. It doesn't feel quite as hollow. However, you're gonna pay several hundred dollars more than that, 300 or so, but you're gonna get a much more premium feel and the display is much smoother. So that's something I wanted to point out as well. I do think the screen, should have been brighter. This iPad still only hits 600 nits of brightness, which is nothing compared to the higher end iPad 12.9, which can hit 1000 nits. So definitely this thing is is should be brighter. To be a pro device, come on Apple, let's up the brightness on this pro iPad as it's not fair that the 12.9 users get a brighter display and they're technically supposed to both be pro iPads, so I want to see a brighter display on the next model. It just, for me, it's not cutting it no more on the 11 inch. You keep giving us the same display year after year, whereas you actually upgraded the 12.9 last year. Not happy with that. But the overall display itself, I mean, it's not like I'm unhappy with using it. It's still a sharp, smooth panel. I'm just saying for the money and for the fact that we've had this several times, it's just not super impressive anymore, it's just a good panel that we're kind of used to with this 11 inch model. Now, if you've never had the 11, in, 11 inch model, you're coming from a cheaper iPad, anytime you go to something better, it's gonna feel much better, but for iPad Pro users who are looking to upgrade, definitely not major in that front. However, I will say one thing, I feel like this iPad is just super, super fast, and it is with the M2 CPU, eight gigabytes of RAM, clocked at a higher speed, then before, combine that with the 120 hertz, man, this thing flies. So, I mean, it's ridiculous how fast this is. You know, you can't really showcase it, but you will feel it day to day. This thing just absolutely screams through everything you do. It's the fastest iPad experience I've ever seen, ever, which is not saying a lot because iPads have been very fast for a long time, but I mean, this thing is computer laptop speed fast. This thing is fast, fast. So definitely you'll enjoy that if you care about things like speed. Now, the next thing I wanna say about this iPad Pro is on the rear, you know, it definitely lets you know it says iPad Pro. I mean, not that you're gonna be looking at the rear that much, but no funny business down here letting you know it's, it's not just another iPad, it's an iPad Pro. So you definitely know right there, kind of neat that they put that there. It's kind of like the MacBook Pros and stuff like that where you can see stuff and definitely let you know when you're looking at the iPads in the store, okay, that one over there is the iPad, this is the iPad Pro. So do keep that in mind. The next thing I wanna talk about is the experience with the Magic Keyboard. This Magic Keyboard has been around for some time already as well. So again, it's not gonna be something that's overly impressing at anyone. You can go ahead and enable keyboard brightness right here in control center now, which is quite nice. So a test of the keyboard. So overall, it's got that nice feel just like you'll find on a MacBook, but on the whole, it's not really a major upgrade. It's the same keyboard. It still costs like 300 bucks, so it's not cheap, but it really brings the full experience of the iPad into something more 
of a laptop kind of feel. Now with the 11 inch, you don't get the number row like you get on the 12.9 inch on the digital keyboard. And that brings me on to just letting you know that when you combine this iPad with the Magic Keyboard experience, it definitely goes over $1,000. So add an Apple Pencil in there, you're looking at MacBook Air prices around 1100. But if the iPad is what you want, you can definitely do a lot of things you can do on here you can't do on a MacBook like Apple Pencil Art. Or if you wanna be a little bit more portable, a little lighter, this is a lighter product than that as well. In terms of this Apple Pencil, it's still the second generation, so it's the better pencil here. If you get a paper like Screen Protector, you could definitely get a little bit better writing. It still kind of feels hard on a regular Screen Protector. Not sponsored, but I'm just saying, if you want to get, you have to get like a matte type Screen Protector if you want it to feel better, but this Apple Pencil experience is pretty darn good. Like, it does the job. And if you want to do art, you're going to really like this. However, the canvas on the 11 inch, 10.9 inch, whatever, it's not as big as the 12.9 inch. So I would recommend if you do a lot of drawing, you'll want the bigger version. If you want to do drawing on the go, on the move, if you want to do art, art stuff on the move, you'll want to do it here. You can also just use the Apple Pencil to navigate stuff and scribble as well on here to find applications and stuff like that. So it's not like it's limited just to drawing. It does have its uses, but at the end of the day, I don't use it too much just for notes here and there, but it's still a pretty great option if you want to get that Apple Pencil. Next thing I want to say is I think this iPad is just kind of starting to feel a little boring. Not because it's a bad product, it's actually an amazing product, but it's kind of so good that it's just kind of feeling boring these days. They keep making an iPad that feels like the last version of the same iPad. So to me, it just kind of feels like are we gonna get anything different soon? Like with the iPad Pro, it just feels like same old, same old every year. Yeah, we have a faster CPU, but at the end of the day, iPads have been performing well, and it's not like having an older iPad was ruining your everyday experience because it was too slow. It was never slow. I've never had an iPad Pro that was slow. So the speed is probably not gonna be enough for everybody, but if you haven't had one and you're picking one up, now you're getting the fastest one available. I do like how with these new iPads, especially the Pro models, they're allowing you to put these scaling options where you go down here and display and you could change the view to more space. Now what that does is it kind of scales the display out so you have more space to operate this thing in the Magic Keyboard. It allows you to have a bigger overall experience when you are using the browser and you're doing multitasking. It just feels a lot more like a laptop with this scaling option. However, if you wanna go back to the regular iPad mode, you'll go right there. So the software is iPadOS 16.1.1 right now, and it does bring that nice stage manager feature right here, which can only be found in this size format for the iPad. So if we go ahead, or the iPad Pro. So if you go ahead, you'll see right here, we can bring in other applications like that, and it can really improve multitasking if that's something that you care about quite a bit. Page Manager definitely brings a lot more useful things for multitasking, ability to go between these applications, really improves it quite a bit. But at the end of the day, we still don't have Mac-like software on here, so you're still gonna be limited to using mobile applications, even though you can put them on the side. It's still a very productive device. I feel like you just gotta know how to use iPadOS in a way to make it productive, but it can still be very useful at the end of the day. Software was a definite nice upgrade this year, but definitely you're gonna see you get these new iPad wallpapers here. They give you two new ones down here. So you get this pinkish one right here, and then you get this purplish blue one right there. So those are kind of like the new things. And of course, there's much more. We're not gonna go over every single feature. They did bring the weather application, which is amazing. We've been needing this forever. Now we're just waiting on getting the calculator app because I still have to download my own calculator app. Well, next up, I think the battery life is quite good. You know, it's still a 10 hour all day battery life iPad. It does the job. Again, it's it's not gonna blow you away. It's gonna, you're gonna expect long battery life like you've had on other iPads and it's no different here, but it's not really like blowing other ones away. It does basically the same job. So again, not, not much change there. I think for a camera experience though, you get a darn good experience for an iPad here. Let me go ahead and find the camera wherever it is. 
you get a really good camera experience on this iPad. So if you're looking for a good camera for an iPad, you can go ultra wide right there. You can zoom in a little bit, pretty solid video. On the front, you can actually go out like that wide angle, so really good for conferences, although the camera's still up here on the, on the top part. So not like the 10th gen where they put it over here, this one still has it on the side, which is a little bit weird. Like they brought a better feature to a cheaper iPad. I don't really understand that. So they can put it up here on the next pro. Overall, at the end of the day, I don't wanna like go on about every single little detail, every single little feature. You know what you're getting here. You're getting a super smooth, super fast iPad with all the applications you want. You get the Apple Pencil, you, you don't get it. You gotta buy it. You buy the Apple Pencil, you buy the Magic Keyboard and you have close to a full computer experience, but you're still running the mobile iPad OS. However, iPad OS is getting much more powerful and with the M2 on here, this is a good investment in an iPad if you want to keep this thing super long time because the CPU is not going to be slow for many, many years. Not that the other ones were, but this one's even more powerful. So, I mean like much more powerful. So, this is a true like 5-year iPad if you want to keep it that long. So, definitely you are paying a lot, but you're getting longevity with this product. However, you're not getting a redesign. You're not getting something that's groundbreakingly different. So if you're looking for something super different, it's not here. So that's what I really think of it. It's kind of like the other products they've been launching this year. More of the same, but faster. They, Im they improved a lot of the internals this year. They didn't really groundbreak. They, they didn't really introduce something that's going to wow us in the change of design. So overall, I definitely like it. I think it's better than the 10th gen iPad, and I think it's a powerful portable machine, but it's not something we haven't seen before. That's my final take. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you're picking up the iPad M2 or not. Are you picking up another iPad this year? Or you're just bored with iPads. Let me know down below in the comments section. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.